What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid and welcome to my guide for Disgaea 6. In this video guys, I'm going to be showing you the best way to level when you're still early on in the game. Now, obviously I have my guide for maximum level in one fight and I also have my uh, my karma farming guide if you want to level multiple characters at once. However, those two guides are pretty late game methods and they need quite a few stats. What about for those who are still going through the story or they're still in uh, carnage mode and they can't quite do rook sasha mode? This is going to be a guide for you guys. So, before we actually start, let's talk about how EXP is earned. So, unlike previous Disgaea games where the person who killed the monster gets the EXP, that is not the case this time. Anybody who kills anything, all that EXP actually goes into a pot and then it's distributed to everybody at the end of a fight. Because of that, the only character that actually needs EXP boosting abilities is the person doing the killing because everybody will benefit from this. Just make sure the character who has all of these abilities is going to be the one that kills everything. Now, let's actually take a look at the abilities while we're here, shall we? So straight off the bat, Genius Study, Study Maniac, Study Nerd, Study Wiz, World is Mine. Now, World is Mine comes from Maliodia. Uh, Overlord Training, Happy Song, which comes from Sea Angels, and Study Lover. Now, these are pretty much all the EXP boosting abilities we can get at the moment. These pretty much just come from the, uh, the squad shop, other than Happy Song and uh, World is Mine. Uh, you've got Genius Study and Study Maniac, which comes from Super Reincarnation, though. So, these are the abilities we're going to be using for all leveling. Also, I make sure to have Happy Song on all of my other characters that are going to be in the fight. That's just to give me an extra 30% each time as well. Now, obviously you're not going to have all them if you're doing this on your first, uh, you know, your first playthrough. Let's say you're not even in post-game yet. You're obviously not going to have all of these abilities. Do not worry. It's just going to be a little bit slower. Now, if you do have the DLC, though, I do suggest having Mao be your character who actually does all the killing. And the reason for that is his innate ability, Evil Academy Honors, increases attack power by 5% and EXP gain by 25% per enemy unit on the map. That is a much, much bigger increase than you might think. That's why if you do have Mao, always use him for exp leveling not only that there is another dlc character that isn't out just yet unfortunately which does have an ability that functions pretty much the same way as happy song unfortunately though as i said not out we can't use it so for now we will completely ignore that now when it comes to early game leveling you want to make sure in the cheat shop you have exp set to the highest possible value obviously because i'm already like all the way through post game my maximum is 3000 percent exp doesn't matter what your maximum is just make sure you've got it set to the maximum possible enemy strength again make sure that is the highest one that you can do if you can't clear 20 stars or you can only just clear 20 stars after like a really tough fight don't use it when it comes to exp well when it comes to exp farming efficiency is what matters so if you can absolutely crush 10 stars but you can only just clear 20 stars after a long drawn out fight Obviously 20 stars is going to be no good because it's slow. You want to go for the one that you can kill in one hit pretty much. You just want to absolutely crush these stages over and over and over again for pure speed. So again, just do the highest one that you can do very quickly. I've got back to square one turned off. And I'm also going to have everyone is a bomb turned off as well. And the main reason for that is these methods, we're not really going to use the Prenny trick with Hog all the XP. Because these stages are not really designed for that, unfortunately. They're really, really slow. Now, in terms of what stages you should grind, we have stage 2-3, which is Rich Man's Plaza. Now, whether you're in normal mode, carnage mode, or exhaustion mode, this is a very good stage to start on. It's got one enemy unit and he's pretty damn easy to beat. Now, if you can only beat him once and you can't actually kill him four times because he does revive, turn back to square one on and then you will only have to kill him once because he will not revive on that. He will only revive in subsequent kills. So if you've got back to square one turned on, he will not revive. Of course, so that does mean you only get one kill's worth of EXP instead of four. 
So again, you know, if you're just starting out in Carnage mode or you're just starting out in Rook Sasha mode, that's a good stage to start on because it'll also give you some gear. Because one thing to note is gear in D6 is a little weird. So for example, a rank 1 Carnage item will always be better than any rank 40 normal item. Doesn't matter what item it is, it will always be drastically, drastically better. And likewise, the same goes for Ruxosha items. A rank 1 Ruxosha item will be infinitely better than a rank 40 Carnage item. Even if you've leveled them, even if you've leveled them, they will be drastically, drastically better in terms of stats. And when you're just starting out, that is going to be super, super important. So let's say, uh, let's say you're tired of stage 2-3 right now. Well, we can actually go ahead and do stage 6-5, which is Royal Chamber 2. Now, uh, sorry, Neo Human World, Royal Chamber 2. What this stage is, is if we just quickly go on and enter in here. Now, in this stage, it's actually just a lone Prinny board. Uh, Prinny board? Lucky board. And it's an EXP, man. Now, obviously, I'm on Ruxosha mode at the moment, so I am going to get a lot more EXP than most probably would. But this is probably the first, like, stage purely designed around grinding. So if you're having trouble getting through any of the later stages, this is a good place to start. So obviously right now on uh, 20 star Rook Sasha mode, I just got 3 trillion EXP. So if you are just starting out in Rook Sasha, this is a drastically good stage to really get things going on. If you can kill 20 stars. So, <clears throat> what if you are past that? You know, you're, you're stronger than that. Well, the next good stage to go to is actually going to be Overlord's Keep. And from there, you want to go down to Griffin Chamber, which, again, is stage 9-5. So, we're going to go in here. Now, why Griffin Chamber? Well, it's pretty much the same as the Royal Chamber 2. The only difference is there are three Lucky Boards. We have one for EXP, one for HL, and one for Mana. Now, what you can do here is you can bring a unit, lift up the EXP one, and throw it in a line. And then, if you're still early on, you know, you're still relying on a... Um, a galaxy mage for elemental burst they're in a nice line here so you can just go on through use elemental burst and boom you can easily one shot them all just like that now that is a really really good idea if you want to get some early 20 star farming going because then you only need to use elemental burst once now i only earned one trillion exp there but just remember my galaxy mage has no exp boosting abilities and i didn't bring the whole party out to take advantage of happy song either if I was to use all of my EXP boosting Evelties there, I would have gained about 10 trillion EXP for that fight. Okay, now that we've gotten past the Griffin Chamber, let's take a look at some more worlds. Oh, excuse me, hiccups. So right now we have two stages left. We have Peaceful World, Ball of Blessing, which is stage 14-5. Now, this is probably going to be the stage you use for all your late game grinding. And this, this is an iffy one. So if you can do stage 20, well, if you can do 20 star Carnage mode, that is actually better until about, you know, enemy difficulty level 10 or Sasha. So as long as you can actually clear Ball of Blessing, it's pretty much the best stage to go to. Essentially, the only thing you need to make sure though is if you're going to use stage 14 5 You do need to have back to square one turned on because you will be fighting five god of destructions that way If this is turned off, you'll just be fighting five samurais and you don't want that The only reason we want to do that stage is the five god of destructions because they give insane exp off you can use everyone as a bomb method on stage 14.5 as well, because that will give a single character absolutely buttloads of EXP. In fact, that is actually how you do the um, maximum level in one fight as well. You use stage 14.5 and all EXP. Now, if you don't want to do that, or you're too weak to do that, because yes, that is a thing. Like, this is, this is a hard stage to farm, okay? This is pretty much what you're going to be farming late game, especially on Rixosha mode. The only other stage available is going to be the uh, Martial Dimension Final Trial. Now, the stage difficulty for this is locked in Ruxosha mode, but it's not too difficult. Now, what you have here is you have five Lucky Boards, four for HL, and then one for EXP. They are on Geo Panels for 100% extra HL and 100% extra EXP. Now, what you would do is 
Bring out all your units so you can really benefit from all the um, the happy songs and things like that. Now, in order to actually clear the stage, you only need to kill the EXP Duke. So you don't need to worry about killing any of these guys or anything like that. You only need to kill the EXP Duke. So what I would suggest doing is using a skill for this. So if I just go ahead and execute there. So as you can see right now, boom. 23 to 27 trillion. Now, this is the second best stage to farm EXP. Mainly due to the fact it's very, very quick compared to 14.5. 14.5 would give me about 50 to 60 trillion EXP on each character per clear with this exact same setup. So the EXP difference is quite bad, but it is faster to actually kill. In terms of EXP per hour, this stage is actually still marginally slower than 14.5, but much, much, much easier. So if you have some, you know, some really good Rook Sasha gear, then I would say do stage 14.5. If you can't quite clear 14.5 on a high difficulty, then just do this final trail. You can use things like uh, Lucky Board and Board Killer Evelties as well to make things even easier. And of course, because it's Rook Sasha and it's got a bonus rank of 30, you can also get some really high level items to go into the item world to start getting high end Rook Sasha gear as well. But though guys, that is going to be it for this video. I hope this little uh, grinding guide has helped you to progress. Just remember one thing though, when doing this method, when it comes to reincarnating, have your killer not reincarnate. If your killer reincarnates, it means you have to slowly level him back up. So what I suggest doing is I originally used Zed. So I just left Zed and not reincarnated him. And then I started working on all my other characters at the same time. So my Zed would not reincarnate, my other nine characters would. Because super reincarnation is incredibly, incredibly broken in this game. If you are stuck, then super reincarnate. Because you want to get your enhancements all the way up. Now you start at 255 enhancements. Once you uh, complete the post game and you can unlock carnage mode, that goes up to 500. That is effectively double your stats at that point okay you can effectively double your stats just by capping that out once you complete carnage mode and unlock rook sasha mode then you can take that 500 all the way up to 2000 that is a major major increase and if you want to complete rook sasha mode you're pretty much gonna need the 2000 in each stat once you complete rook sasha mode though you can pass the other bill for 500 million karma which then takes this cap up to 4000 now, getting to 2,000 isn't really that difficult. Getting to 4,000, though, is an incredibly tedious task. So, what I would suggest doing is work on getting your characters all the way up to 2,000 in enhancements. Because just by having 2,000 in enhancements, it's incredibly, incredibly easy to start getting stats in the trillions. And that is what you want to go for. Once you start getting stats in the trillions, that's when grinding really starts to get faster. It's like, when, once you get a couple of characters with a few trillion stats, that's where you can really take advantage of my end game guides. But though everybody, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, then please be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Because I'm going to be making even more guides for Disguise 6. Still though everyone, thank you for watching and I will see you soon.